Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Rishi from the India office of uh, Zoho. And I'm with this company for the past nine years. And I'm taking care of uh, the support and sales team for the CRM, especially. So I'm going to present to you the perfect balance between automation and uh, productivity. So in this, we have, uh, I'm going to cover few of this automation features and also I'm going to show you uh, like how the CRM can be used uh, to increase the productivity of your sales reps. So is it audible? Everyone can hear me? Yes. Yeah. So under the automation I'm uh, going to cover the web forms, uh, workflow rules, uh, then report schedulers, then we do have assignment rules, and uh, we have uh, pop-up and email alert for tasks and events. And also, I'm going to talk about a uh, little bit about the automatic data backup. So uh, web forms, uh, we have this feature in the leads, contacts, and uh, cases module. You can generate your own uh, web form and it can be embedded uh, in your web pages. And uh, this mainly uh, useful in generating uh, leads or contacts, or you can use the form to collect the feedbacks from your customers, uh, which can be added directly into your CRM. And uh, the feedbacks uh, goes to the cases module, and uh, leads and contacts go to the respective modules. And uh, uh, so the thing is you have to give a name for the uh, uh, form which you are going to create and the return URL is nothing but uh, once they hit the submit button in the form so the system has to redirect to a different page like thank you or something so you can create a uh, page and you can put that in the return URL and uh, the domain name is nothing but where you are going to host this particular form. Say, for example, if you're going to host it in uh, yahoo.com, then you have to specify the domain name there. And uh, the next step is you have to select the fields. Uh, the fields are uh, from that particular module. Say, for example, if you have created custom fields in your leads or contacts module, then that will show up here. So you can just uh, select the fields by clicking on uh, the checkboxes adjacent to them and uh, those fields will show up in your web form, that is the output form. And uh, also you can enable email notification, so you can create your own email templates, and uh, those templates can be associated, and uh, uh, this email acknowledgement is nothing but once they submit the form, the system can trigger an email saying like thank you for submitting your details and we will get back to you soon kind of uh, email acknowledgement can be sent to the person who has submitted the information. And added to that, you can uh, send a notification email to the lead owner uh, who is going to uh, take care of that particular lead. And uh, next comes the lead assignment step. Uh, here, uh, other thing you have is uh, uh, approval of leads. Say for example, if you're hosting a form in your website, then uh, there is a chance like many people come and fill in junk information, like A, B, C, all those things, they just fill in, submit it. So if you enable the uh, lead approval process, then automatically what happens is the uh, leads which are submitted to the form uh, come to the approve lead section. So I'll show you in the product. Uh, it will come and line up there, so you can every day uh, the administrator or the person uh, can go there and uh, check which are the genuine leads and they can up be approved and uh, it will get into the system. Others can be deleted from there itself. And uh, next we have a uh, uh, assignment rule. Either you can directly assign it to an owner and uh, or else you can select the assignment rule. I'll be covering that in a separate topic in the same section. So the final step is once you uh, complete all those steps, you'll, uh, the system will generate a HTML code. So this HTML code can be uh, given to your webmaster or 
uh, IT person who can generate a form and uh, that can be embedded in your website. So any questions here? Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah. the HTML code which you get from the system, that output can be customized as you need. So you can change your colors. Uh, all you uh, should know is uh, HTML coding, that's it. So the next one is uh, workflow management. So the workflow makes uh, life easier in the CRM. So. Uh, the workflow can help you in creating uh, records uh, and it can be triggered like uh, uh, when a record is created or edited uh, or uh, either created or edited or uh, you can use it for a field update and uh, so it can also like the workflow uh, once it is triggered it can either create a task automatically or it can uh, trigger an alert email to specified person or it can update a field in the CRM or in that particular module. So I'll just show you that in the product. So under the automation, we have the workflow. So to create a rule, you can just click on this create rule. So the basic information you can provide is like uh, the name and uh, so you can select it, say for example, you want that to be created for leads. And hit next. So now it will ask you whether uh, it has to be executed when uh, records are created or edited or create or edit or certain field is updated. Yeah? Is there a notification or a workflow if a record is deleted? Deleted? No. Uh, the thing is it can be triggered when create or edit happens. Uh, delete, we don't have any notification triggered. So this feature has been requested by a few of our customers. We do have uh, that to be incorporated in our you feature. Know. Yeah. <laughs> so once you hit the next, so it will ask the criteria. So if you want to specify certain criteria like uh, if uh, the industry is like software. Now here comes the triggers. So either it can send alert email or it can create a task and assign it to a specific user or uh, it can update a, a field and it can call a webhook. Uh, we have a separate session to cover the webhooks uh, uh, in our training track and also you can set follow-ups. So to click on this, so you can trigger like, uh, you can select an email template and uh, this email template will be sent to uh, the list of people specified here. Either you can uh, send it to an internal person or you can send it to the contact or lead. Uh, that is you can select the email fields in the module or related module. So for example, if you select this, the leads uh, email ID will get this particular email template. The, uh, the uh, information will be populated in it and it will be sent as an email to that particular lead itself. Okay, additional recipients can also be specified here, like record owner, record owner's uh, superior or record creator. And uh, this is all about uh, the alerts. 
and the assigning task so you can directly uh, once the rule is triggered you can create a task the system can automatically trigger a, a task and it can be assigned to a, a specific uh, person so you can select the name in the assigned to and also you can notify the assignee about uh, the uh, task has been created and also you can set reminders uh, like pop up or email reminders to the specified assignment. An update field uh, is an interesting feature. So when a particular criteria is met and the workflow is triggered, you can make the system to automatically update the value in certain fields. Like you can specify uh, in which module, like. So the leads can be selected because you are doing it for the lead. And uh, say, for example, if you want to update, uh, say, the job title as, say, whatever you want. Sorry. So automatically, the system, when the workflow criteria is met, it will trigger the field update. So any questions as of now? Okay. And web, web hooks, uh, you can actually uh, associate like uh, uh, URLs to notify and uh, more details about the web hooks will be covered in the uh, creator session, which we have uh, And also you can add follow-ups. So you can uh, like <coughs> this follow-ups is uh, for the uh, pulse module. So uh, I think you, pulse, we have a module called pulse. I'll cover that uh, in this session. So that will help you like uh, uh, as you do in Facebook. So you can follow a certain uh, records which will give you updates about uh, what is happening, whether it has been updated or not. So all those things can be seen in the Pulse module. So this is the one. So the Pulse module actually you can follow certain leads and uh, not sure whether you guys noticed this particular button in each and every record. The follow one, the left hand side. So that actually, once you hit this, automatically the system will start tracking that particular record and whatever changes happens, that will show up in the pulse tab. So that will be helpful, uh, say for example, uh, if your sales reps are working in an important deal, Probably if you just follow it, you don't want to search for that record and see the updates, what's happening, all those. You can just go to the Pulse module and you can see the details there itself. Can Pulse send those notifications like the No, not now. The thing is uh, you have to go to the module and you can see the updates about this. No, it's not there anymore. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, any questions about workflows or? Okay, uh, report schedulers uh, is uh, uh, another uh, interesting automation feature. Say, uh, in each organization, like uh, getting the report from sales rep is one of uh, uh, quite challenging job for the management because uh, you have to ping them and get the report uh, and you have to check whether it is ready and it has to be sent through the email. You have to consolidate this, all those things has to be done. In CRM, uh, you can create the reports and uh, the sales reps can automatically enable this report scheduler for each one of them. 
maybe it's a weekly or monthly report, whatever it is. And if they add that in the report scheduler, uh, the system itself will take care of uh, submitting the report to the higher ups and uh, makes uh, uh, life easier. So it's a simple wizard where you can just uh, specify a scheduler name and uh, you can select which report has to be added to the schedule. And uh, you, know, you have to specify the start date and time. And it, uh, you can repeat it either weekly, monthly, uh, yearly kind of thing. So based on that, uh, the system will generate the report and it will attach it as an Excel file to your email. And the email will be sent to the recipient details specified. Either it can be sent to administrators or uh, managers. So you can select based on the roles also. Or you can select like users. Uh, you can select directly the users. Uh, and someone who is not using the CRM but they want to see the uh, reports alone, their email ID can be specified in the box specified in the bottom. Any questions uh, on the report scheduler? Okay. And uh, uh, assignment rules. Uh, this is uh, useful in assigning the leads. And uh, this can be used whenever you're importing a file, like uh, thousands of leads when you're importing. This assignment rules can be helpful in assigning or distributing the leads to the sales reps. And we have uh, this assignment rules for contacts module also, uh, where you can specify criteria and uh, uh, based on uh, like uh, the region, uh, what the salesperson is handling, the lead can be distributed to them. So just you have to specify the criteria, like country is USA, uh, assign it to Marty Sinclair. And uh, uh, you can also associate a task during the assignment itself. So the system will take care of distributing the leads as well as it can take care of assigning automatic uh, tasks for them. And uh, so every day the sales reps, they don't want to go to the lead or contact tab, uh, whether they got any new lead uh, to check those things. They can just uh, log into the CRM in the home page itself, the task, everything will show up. Okay, next, uh, the productivity aspect. So in uh, CRM, uh, we try to make uh, the life easier for the sales reps. So we feel like uh, they, they should not do more updates or they should not uh, get distracted by seeing more information in the pages. That's the reason we have incorporated the business card view. So once they click on a lead or contact, they will just see the name, phone number, email ID. So the business card view can be configured as per your need. And it will just show few field details. And other than, other than that, uh, everything will be in the bottom. So they have to click on, uh, so this is the business card view. So we have LinkedIn in integration also. So for example, if you know uh, uh, users, LinkedIn email address, probably you just click on it and uh, automatically it can fetch information from LinkedIn and it will show up in the CRM. Okay, and the bottom three uh, dots which are showing up here, if you click on it, it will take you to the detailed uh, page. So there you, co you can find all the field details. So this is other way to uh, customize the business card view. And you can see the notes uh, under the contact. And this is uh, once you click on the plus sign in the side, so you can select five fields from the existing uh, contacts or leads. So that will show up in the business card view. So you can have like uh, email, phone, mobile, department, or uh, like uh, Facebook ID or Twitter ID, whatever you want, you can show it up there. So next is uh, the productivity aspect is the CRM with the email. So we have uh, uh, integrated our own uh, mail uh, application, Zoho Mail. So, and we have an add-on 
inside the CRM and uh, how many people are using the Zoho Mail add-on? Okay. Yeah, so uh, once you enable the Zoho Mail add-on and uh, if you fill in the pop server details in your Zoho Mail, automatically the system will start fetching the emails in Zoho Mail and uh, you will get an email tab in the CRM and when you go to the email tab, you can see your complete uh, emails there as you do in a mail client. And uh, uh, the main advantage of uh, Zoho mail integration is automatically the system will synchronize the emails with uh, leads and contacts. So when you go to a particular contact, you don't want to bother about uh, searching the email threads between you and uh, that particular contact. So that will show up in the email section. What's a workaround because I created two extra email fields because most everybody has more than one email, at least the people I work with, and the other emails won't link to the record, yeah. only the first one will. Yeah. So do I need, do I... You have to have a different uh, uh, record for those emails. the record and put email, okay. yeah. that's kind of what I've been doing. Yeah, and uh, uh, added to that, uh, the productivity aspect is, uh, say for example, uh, the same contact might be in touch with some other person in your company. Uh, and uh, if that person is also a CRM user and Zoho Mail add-on user, then in the top right-hand side of the emails section, you have a drop-down where you can select which user's email uh, thread you want to see. So based on that, you will come to know uh, the complete email transaction between that user and also the contact. So you, yeah. One more question. On that email, if I change your email does it, uh, to a new one, you get a new email and you let me know, will it delete all of the other ones and I put the new one in the primary email address field? Yeah. Will it delete all the previous emails? No, once you change the email ID there, automatically uh, the emails won't show up here. It'll pick up all the new ones. Yeah, that's right. The right. That's right. Will stay on that cash record. Yeah, it will be in the email tab, not in under that particular contact. Okay. Thanks. Yes. Is there a uh, way we can select all emails when we're scrolling through emails in there? That is between all the users. Yeah. No, that is not possible. So you can uh, select uh, the users and see the email. Tab. No, uh, it's not audible. Can you repeat that? When you're, when you're researching a case, so you're trying to find something out about a particular customer that may have emailed anybody in your organization, you have to select them one at a time. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that is a limitation, actually. But uh, uh, we may come up with uh, some workarounds in the future. Okay. Yes? I, I have the same issues. So if they could come up with a workaround, this is for a show all. <laughs> Yeah. The, okay. <laughs> yeah, the main problem is uh, uh, whenever you select a user, it will access that mailbox and fetch the mails there. So show all is something uh, it's not possible because uh, you're accessing uh, the different users' uh, information. So it's uh, kind of, if it is stored in the CRM itself, then it's, it will be easy to show. Because in, uh, say for example, if you go to the email section, I don't have anything here. If you, uh, Okay, now in the uh, drop down, we have something called like uh, uh, emails in the CRM. So if it is an email sent uh, from the CRM, whoever it is, when you select that, automatically that will show all the emails sent by the users in your CRM account. Okay, so if it is something related to Zoho Mail, then uh, you have to select each user's name. Yeah. Name at domain, first name dot second name, sales at info at the net. And so you have to create a separate. Yes. So there's no way of seeing. No, that is not possible because. Yeah, we can take that as a request and uh, we can forward that. At the moment, it's not possible. It's a separate contact for every single 
Yeah, right. Yeah, the thing is, you can uh, associate your own uh, secondary emails in your Zoho mail, but uh, for each and every contact, that is uh, kind of a tough thing. But I'll talk to the product team about that. Okay, and uh, uh, the interesting part is when you uh, click on the email, you can read it in the CRM itself. It doesn't uh, take you to a different window, so it will open up in the same uh, window, and you don't want to leave the application and come back. So it will uh, take time to tab in between uh, two windows, so we have given this option. So you can read it here, and uh, to reply, you can just click on the reply or reply all, and uh, do the uh, email replying there itself, and that will make uh, things more easier for you. So that is a place where you can select the users and see their emails. And uh, this is uh, one more interesting feature. Uh, how many people are using this? Spreadsheet view? Okay. Okay. Yeah, the spreadsheet view is uh, like uh, this will help the salespeople to update the records faster. So instead of navigating from one record to other for updating, say, one or two fields, it, it will be a tedious process for all the users. We have given this uh, spreadsheet view. This is something like we integrated our own uh, Zoho Sheet application with our CRM. So automatically what happens is the list of uh, contacts or leads or uh, accounts will open up in the spreadsheet. I'll just show you that uh, example here. Say for example, the department is not uh, updated here. What I can do is, this is the place where I can click and open this set of leads, uh, sorry, contacts in a spreadsheet. So once you click on it, it will uh, take you to a window where it will give you some uh, available restrictions. That is maximum of 999 rows can be opened. So this is the list. So the contacts has been moved to this uh, spreadsheet. Now for example, if you want to update the phone number, And if you want to update the department. Since this is a spreadsheet, can you do like find and replace and all the features that come in the spreadsheet? Yeah, that is uh, within this uh, set of details. So once I'm done with the update, I can just save this spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet has been saved successfully. Now I can close this window. And when I do a refresh here, just a moment. It's not refreshing this so much. Yeah. So you can see the details has been updated uh, in the CRM. Because salespeople are more comfortable working in the spreadsheet than working in the CRM, so this is one of the, <laughs> yes? So can you only update records there, can you insert the records? No, inserting is not possible, only updation can be done there. And next is uh, the plugin for Microsoft Outlook. So 
some people will be comfortable in using uh, Outlook than Zoho Mail. So we have a plugin for Microsoft Outlook, which enables you to synchronize all your contacts, emails, and uh, calendar events, tasks. All those things can be synchronized. And uh, this plugin, uh, you can install it. Once it is installed, automatically the uh, Zoho CR menu will appear in the Outlook. Uh, I think uh, how many people are using the plugin for Outlook? Yeah, uh, <coughs> sorry. Yeah, when you go to the setup under apps and add-ons, we have something called other apps. Here you can see the plugin for Microsoft Outlook. From here, you can download. So this is, we have for 32-bit computer and 64-bit. Uh, and uh, if you are new, uh, you can uh, use it for like 15 days at free of cost. You can try it out, and then you can uh, purchase it. No, as of now, we don't have it. Uh, we are more focused on uh, the mobile applications and the other integrations. Uh, we are not right now focusing on integrating that with Mac. So most likely, our next priorities will be with the other email applications. Yeah? Does that also log the emails just like the Yeah, the thing is, uh, uh, after installing the plugin, you can select the emails uh, in Outlook. And uh, there will be a button called Add Email to Outlook, sorry, CRM. So automatically, the email will get added to the uh, records in the CRM. So that will show up in the email section. Yes, yes. Yeah, right. As of now, the synchronization uh, is manual. So the next priority is to automate that. Yeah. So that means that the event is used to mail over. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, the limitation, uh, I won't say like uh, Gmail, uh, you can directly configure in Zoho Mail, so automatically the system will uh, fetch and uh, it will work same as Zoho Mail. The Gmail will also work as the same. Uh, there is no limitation in that. Yeah, both can be added. Received and uh, sent can be added. So it's not automatic. Only thing is you have to go to the folder, select the email, and do the addition. So within your actual, with the login, if you send an email to somebody that has an email in Zoho, it's not automatically added. You, you manually do that. Yeah, right. Okay. Yes? Just want to make a comment. Before we close the project, we have thousands of emails, so we just keep the emails so the Yeah, I understand that, but uh, as of now, that is a manual thing you have to do. Yes. So we uh, got a lot of feedback from our customers, and we are incorporating the automation one. So we just got emails, not thousands of emails. Yeah, I understand. It will be uh, soon uh, uh, given as a feature. So I think we're, we're out of time. Rishi, did you, yeah, did you have yes. more? Slides are yeah. pretty well wrapped up. Only a couple, that's it. <clears throat> so maybe another one, one minute. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, next is uh, the plugin for Microsoft Word. This uh, enables you to uh, print out, say, uh, say uh, you can select records and use this uh, plugin to print out like uh, documents. Uh, which can be like uh, personalized to the records in the CRM. Say, for example, if you want to uh, 
generate like hundreds of uh, letters, which has to be sent through a, a postal mail. Yeah? You know, the email question I had before where it locks and loads to the one record, if I have five or six or ten different emails for just me in my Zoho mail program, and they send it to any one of those, as long as it's coming from their email address, will it end up on their record? Yeah, right. Regardless of the yeah. Okay, and uh, so you can print out like this, multiple copies of the same letter uh, has been personalized uh, to the list of contacts or leads, and uh, this uh, printout can be like uh, sent through a postal mail uh, and uh, make it life easier. This one uh, interesting thing. And uh, the final thing is like uh, autoresponders. Uh, the autoresponders uh, help you in uh, sending uh, emails in a like a dynamic way or static way. So you can select it from the contact tools or lead tools. And then in the autoresponder page, you can just uh, give a name and uh, select uh, the like custom view to which the email has to be triggered. And then uh, you can like uh, select a folder from which the uh, uh, email template has to be taken. And then uh, you can select like whether it's a static or dynamic autoresponder. Static is nothing but uh, you can directly uh, specify the uh, date and time and the template where uh, when the email has to be sent. And you can also add follow-ups. You can have up to five follow-ups. So automatically, if it is static, those dates, those email templates will be sent to the list specified in the custom view. Dynamic is something like you can specify <coughs> just don't So when you select the dynamic, you can specify like uh, recur every day or uh, every two days or three days or weekly, monthly, you can specify all those things. And also you can specify the start and end date uh, of this particular autoresponder. So whenever uh, contacts get added to that particular custom view, the autoresponders will start triggering to them. Meaning like uh, today you might be having only 10 contacts in the con uh, custom view and uh, tomorrow you will have 5 more. So automatically the 5 will get into this uh, dynamic uh, list and it will uh, send all the follow-up emails.